My name is Peter Kennedy. I've been a practicing artist for the last 45 years. I work across a range of media. Some of that media are traditional media, like painting and drawing, watercolors, for example. But also, uh, when I began my career, would have been regarded as more experimental modes of expression. And uh, those uh, media that I used uh, back in the early 1970s uh, involved the use of uh, neon and fluorescent light uh, in installation contexts, uh, as well as video and sound. It seemed to me that when I attended very briefly East Sydney Technical College in 1965, and having grown somewhat dissatisfied with the uh, type of instruction that was uh, being provided, I found myself spending more and more time in the college library. And it was there that I discovered for the first time in my life as a 19 year old, a range of art magazines, which uh, as a boy from Brisbane, uh, I had never encountered before. So this was a revelation to me. And in looking at a number of these magazines, I first encountered the work of Robert Rauschenberg, who to my mind now, seems to me to have been a proto postmodernist in that uh, he worked across a range of media, including uh, sound and performance, as well as his more, uh, what we would regard as being conventional works now, which would have been uh, three-dimensional assemblages. And I could not see anything in Australian art in 1965 that in any way resembled that way of working. And so uh, looking at Robert Rauschenberg's work, I also uh, probably uh, almost at the same time encountered the work and ideas of uh, John Cage, for example, and the dancer Nurse Cunningham, other dancers like uh, Yvonne Rayner and Tricia Brown, um, sculptors like uh, Robert Morris, for example, and Eva Hess. And I thought there seems to me to be a space here in Australian visual culture that would allow for some breaking down of barriers of limited perceptions as to what constitutes art. So we're talking uh, five or six, seven years later, so that's 1970, 1971, 1972, where I became interested in working in a three-dimensional way, and that's where uh, my work became engaged with the whole notion of installation. Now, I did the first installation work, I think, in Sydney at Gallery A in February of 1970. And uh, the title of that uh, exhibition was Neon Light Installations. The way I think light works, and I'm sure it works in many ways, but the way that it struck me as working when I first presented Neon Light Installations was that the air seemed to be coloured um, because I'd used a number of colours. There was pinks and turquoises and yellows and... Uh, reds and uh, greens and so on. It was a little bit like walking through coloured air or being in the middle of a rainbow. Uh, one had the sense of a coloured mist, as it were. If you stepped outside or you stepped into another room where there was just incandescent or fluorescent light, uh, clearly there was a great uh, difference in the experience. So I hadn't expected that. That was one of the, the great surprises, I think. Um, that light, like water, has this uh, capacity to be porous. Um, it kind of leaks. <laughs> uh, it's permeable. And uh, if you are attuned to its presence, then I think uh, you can uh, have this sense of, uh, as I was suggesting, being very uh, much um, in the middle of it, surrounded by it, I think. So there were two things uh, that were working there. One was the the very precise delineation of the neon tubes themselves that were emitting the light. And then there was the um, experience of being amidst these coloured emissions. So I realised that these things had to be very um, rigorously planned. You couldn't actually just throw a lot of neon in uh, in a particular way and just sort of hope for the best. It was uh, contingent on uh, or determined by drawings and a lot of thought. There just wasn't the opportunity to play around with it in the way that uh, you might play around with painting or drawing or what have you. It's just sort of a, you get one shot at it, basically, pretty much. So uh, the experience itself of being enveloped in this uh, coloured environment was a great surprise, I think, and unexpected. 
But I learned from that and uh, I now know that if you use a number of different coloured lights and you're within a contained space, uh, it, you'll achieve that effect. And to some extent with that knowledge you can play around with that and manipulate it and uh, have a bit more control than, than I would have uh, originally anticipated, I think. I think one of the problems that uh, people had at that time when I did this work was, and this would be the majority of people, is that in their own minds they would have um, raised the question uh, which is, is this art? And uh, I think most of them would have probably uh, said no. So there was a lot of uh, groundwork that had to be done to develop this way of working. I wasn't the only one, there were a number of other artists who uh, came into this area of working in the very early days. But it took a long time for that way of working to be legitimised, I think. Um, there was a resistance to it, and, and often in certain quarters that resistance was quite strong. <laughs>